ஜிநாயக உங்களை அன்புடன் வரவேற்கிறது இந்த எபிசோட்ல நம்ம பார்க்க போறது வந்து ஹால் எஃபெக்ட் அப்படிங்கறத குறிச்சு நம்ம பார்க்க போகிறோம் ஹால் எஃபெக்ட கண்டுபிடிச்ச சயின்டிஸ்ட் வந்து ஹால் என்ற ஒரு அமெரிக்கன் பிசிசிஸ்ட் இன் எயிட்டீன் செவன்டி நைன்ல அவர் அதை கண்டுபிடிச்சிருக்கிறாரு அது என்ன அப்படிங்கிறத பார்ப்போம் சப்போஸ் நம்ம கிட்ட ஒரு கண்டக்டர் இருக்கிறதாக வச்சுக்கோம் கண்டக்டருக்கு பதிலாக நான் இந்த புக்கை உங்களுக்கு நான் காமிக்க விரும்புகிறேன் திஸ் இஸ் ஏ கண்டக்டர் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் த லென்த் ஆஃப் த கண்டக்டர் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் த பிரெத் ஆஃப் த கண்டக்டர் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் த திக்னஸ் ஆஃப் த கண்டக்டர் so this breadth of the conductor let us take it to be d and the thickness of the conductor is small t let us keep this in mind now here you are applying a magnetic field perpendicular to the conductor you are applying a magnetic field perpendicular to the conductor and across the conductor that is along this direction you are applying an electric field now what happens here is in these two sides these two sides a potential is developed the hall voltage is developed and this is called the hall voltage and this was discovered by uh, the scientist hall and now here let us see how it happens and what is the theory involved all these things in this hall effect let me explain once again so you are having a copper strip the copper strip is uh, has a rectangular cross section as i have mentioned here now you are applying a current density j you see this figure also you apply a current density of j along the x direction and applying the magnetic field along the z direction and now here as i have already told agar the y direction la a voltage is produced and this voltage we call it to be the hall voltage this effect that happens in a metal you call it to be the hall effect and this hall effect tells you the nature of the charge as well as the concentration of the charge that is accumulating on both sides all these things could be studied by this hall effect now let us uh, have a brief understanding here now here as i have told let me take the book once again and perpendicular to the book we are applying the magnetic field and the transverse in the opposite direction in the perpendicular direction we are applying the electric field now perpendicular to both e and j perpendicular to both j and b b is perpendicular j is here so in your perpendicular to this plane that is along this direction a force is developed and that force transverse force pulls the charges to the other side now this is evident from a thin plate now here from the figure you can understand how the force is here now we can take the direction of the force by the fingers so this fingers this fingers represents the direction of the uh, magnetic field and the thumb represents the direction in which the electric field is applied so let me take like this now perpendicular to both that means perpendicular to the palm the force will be acting and the charges will be repelled along this direction and this charges will be accumulating along this side as well as this side therefore between these two a potential is developed this is the meaning of it now if you take this one Uh, what is the voltage that had been developed here the voltage developed we call it to be the hall voltage and that can be represented as vh vh represents the hall voltage and it is proportional to the electric field therefore vh will be equal to e into d now let me derive an expression for the hall coefficient which he had already derived let it b is said to be the magnetic field that you are applying along the z direction and q is the magnitude of the charge flowing in the uh, electric field ey and vd is the drift velocity produced uh, velocity will be increasing along the charges whether the charge may be a positive charge or a negative charge so if you hold the fingers like this the drift velocity will be acting perpendicular to both the direction now an electric field is produced that electric field we call it to be q into ey that is along the y direction that force q into ey similarly a magnetic force also pushes the charges and that force will be equal to q vd into b z 
B is some of the basic formulas B, E, V. B is the magnetic field, E is the charge, and V is the velocity by which the charges are moving. Now for our case, Q, V, D into B, Z. Therefore now here, the magnetic force is acting in one direction, the electric force is acting in the opposite direction. So for equilibrium, both should be equal. Therefore, if you, if you add, the total force will be equal to zero. That is given in this equation. And also we know the current density on the two sides, the charges will be accumulated. Therefore, the current density is there. The current density Jx will be equal to, we know the formula already, the basic formula, the number of charges and the velocity or the drift velocity. Mq is the total number of charges and Vd is the drift velocity. N is the number of charges per unit volume. Therefore, Jx will be equal to Nq into Vd. From the first equation, we can find out Vd. Substitute that Vd in the second equation and we can simplify the two equations and find out the expression for Ey, the electric field produced. The Hall field that is produced is Ey will be equal to minus 1 by Nq into Jx by Bz. Now from here, the term inside the bracket, you can call it to be the Hall coefficient minus 1 by Nq. That is the reciprocal of the concentration. Nq is the concentration of the charges that had been accumulated on both sides. Therefore, the Hall coefficient Rh will be equal to the term inside the bracket minus 1 by Nq. From the other equation, Ey will be equal to R, Rh into Jx and Bz. And from here, we can calculate the value of Rh charges, so the Hall coefficient. So finally, the Hall coefficient is Rh will be equal to electric field divided by current density into magnetic field. That is the ratio of the two. Therefore, and the ratio of the two, we can call it to be the Hall coefficient. We can define like this from this uh, statement. Hall coefficient is defined as the ratio of the EMF developed on the y direction to the product of the current density and the magnetic field. And if Q is negative, the charge is negative, Ey will be positive and vice versa. Similarly, we can also calculate the concentration. Nq is called the concentration. So from the Hall coefficient, by knowing the value of Ey, Jz, Jx and Bz, we can calculate the Hall coefficient. From the Hall coefficient, we can calculate the concentration of the charges that can be accumulated on both sides. And also, we, from the direction of the charges that had been accumulated, we can find out the nature of the charge, whether it is a positive charge or a negative charge. Now here, uh, how the drift velocity can also be calculated by Hall coefficient. We know the equation, first equation, QEY plus QVD into Bz will be equal to zero. And also we know the definition for current density. Simplifying this, we can calculate the expression Vd equal to Jx by Nq. Instead of Q, if we take the electron, electronic charge, then J will be equal to I by A. Therefore, Vd will be equal to 1 by Me into I by A. By knowing all these values, we can also calculate the drift velocity of the electron. The drift velocity is calculated to be around 10 to the power of minus 6 meter per second. It varies. And now here, we can also calculate the number of charges per unit volume. If Vh is the Hall potential, then the electric field produced because of the Hall potential will be equal to E will be equal to Vh by D. Since we know Me will be equal to Jb by E, we can calculate the value of N will be equal to Ib by Ae into D by Vh. If T is the thickness of the conductor, A is the area of cross-section, therefore A will be equal to D into T, therefore we can have the expression for N, N will be equal to Ib by Te into 1 by Vh. By measuring the Hall potential, as well as the thickness of the material, knowing the value of the current flowing through this one and the magnetic field, the electronic charge, we can calculate the concentration or the number of charges per unit volume in that Hall potential. Therefore, from this summarizing this, we have studied the Hall coefficient is just the reciprocal of the current carrying charge in the conductor. 
and then the Hall coefficient has the same sign as that of the sign of the charge. For metals, the Hall coefficient will be negative. For metals, Hall coefficients will be negative because for metals, the charge carriers are electrons. Electrons are carrying negative charge, therefore Hall coefficient for metals are negative. For beryllium, cadmium, tungsten and all these things, the Hall coefficient is positive because there the majority carriers or the current carriers are holes. In the case of semiconductors, we have in the extrinsic semiconductor, for the p-type material, holes are the majority carriers and for the n-type semiconductor, electrons are the majority carriers. Therefore, depending upon whether the semiconductor is a p-type material or n-type material, Hall coefficient will also be positive or negative. But for intrinsic semiconductor, the number of holes and the number of electrons are equal. Therefore, naturally one could expect that the Hall coefficient will be zero. These are the things that we read about Hall coefficient. So, from the above discussion, one could understand that a conductor placed perpendicular to a magnetic field will produce a voltage in the opposite direction perpendicular to both. And this is the Hall effect. From the Hall effect or from the Hall potential, we can find out the nature of the charge and the concentration of the charge as well as the drift velocity of the electrons or the charge carriers. Thank you. If you like this video, please like and share it. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon.